Welcome. This lesson is about improvising on guitar, soloing on guitar, and specifically connecting scales. How to seamlessly connect between scale shapes when improvising on guitar. We'll talk about how many of us get stuck in fretboard positions when improvising on guitar, soloing in specific scale shapes. Then we'll talk about a specific way to go about connecting scales as one of the solutions to that problem. And lastly, we'll do a little jamming to test out our guitar soloing once we're free from being stuck in scale shapes. I've put out a bunch of videos on how to practice different scale types on the guitar and learn all the positions of those scales. This lesson is about how to apply that knowledge to real music, real improvising on the guitar. There's a link in the description to a playlist of all those scale videos if you're trying to work on any particular scale. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and doing those things in a really practical, hands-on way so we can have more control over music and express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell. So let's say you know the five scale forms of A minor pentatonic. So you might know this one really well we all kind of learn that one first and uh, eventually try to break out uh, in, into other places on the guitar. So maybe you've kind of worked on mapping out the other ones. There's one over to the left of it. There's one over here to the right of it, over here. And you're working on improvising and maybe sounding pretty good. And uh, but feeling a little stuck when you're when we work on positions in this way And I'm a big fan of the scale forms the scale positions That's why I made that whole series of videos on mastering those but we it's a very useful and kind of logical way to understand the fretboard great to practice that way but then we do want to um, see the whole fretboard and break out of that and connect between those scale forms so this is kind of a, a, a very specific um, strategy to be able to do that we're not just going to suddenly be able to if we don't find a way to practice it and that's general practice advice by the way just practicing something uh and hoping something else happens as as obvious as that sounds that's how we often practice right if you practice over and over again your skill forms and improvising hoping you'll someday connect between them but you're not practicing a specific way to connect between them it's not likely to happen maybe little by little but it's not going directly to the problem so um so again um Staying in one position is not a bad thing. It's actually really important to be able to play something musical that we like and feel good about in one position. But of course, we want that freedom to, if we desire, to shift around and, and play on the guitar. So my point there is that m switching scale positions is not going to make us sound better, but it just gives us more options, right? So if we are not sounding good in one position or not feeling like we like what we're playing in one position, switching around, uh, shifting between the positions is not going to improve that. That's kind of more going to be about phrasing and tone and time and, and what musical ideas we're playing. But of course, we do want that freedom. We want all the options possible. We want to keep kind of mastering the fretboard. So, so again, let's say you know those five positions and I got those on the screen here for you just so you can you can see them. Um, and if you don't know them, then check out my video on the five positions of the pentatonic scale, and there'll be a link to that in the description. So here's what we want to do if we find ourselves stuck in that way, and or just not as free with it as we want to be. I want you to know very clearly where all the roots are, okay? So we'll take this first uh, scale form, and the way that I practice scales and recommend practicing scales already targets the root. So again, I went over that in those other videos, but let's just say, okay, you have uh, what you need to, to kind of see the root really clearly, and then you're improvising coming back to the root a lot. Just at least as a study to know where the root is to get used to that sound. And, and I'm not saying that sound is better. It's a great way to start with your improvising and kind of have that as a, as a home base to go to. So once you know where all the roots are in all these scale form positions, so like this scale form here, root, 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 kind of seeing all of those within the scale form, Okay, so do whatever you need to, to to map those out and use my root to root method exercise from the other videos if you need to. But the point is you get you got to see where those roots are. Now, here's all, it's, this is very simple, but again, it's it's a specific way to practice this um, that gets the problem figured out. If you're thinking too much in a position, we just want to recognize that every root is part of two different scale forms. So we're going to use the root as this kind of we're anchoring our view on the root. 
and we're going to use it as a portal, kind of this this um, this thing you can jump through to get to the other side. Now, again, this might seem really obvious, but have we been doing this intentionally? I mean, technically, you could do it with any note of the scale, but use the root. Um, so this root right here, and you're, you're going to say again, well, yeah, I already knew that, but are we using that to practice with it? So this root here is obviously part of this scale form, and then it's part of this scale form. So what we want to do is use those as kind of our pro portal to switch our view because what's happening is we're seeing all this connect this collection of notes here and we're not seeing all this collection of notes here so you have to consciously have your perspective shift so let's say i'm practicing here and i'm on this root Now I want to get over to the other position. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. So this is just one solution. Okay, well now I'm gonna intentionally think of this being the root of that other scale form. Okay, so now I'm on that root. Now, you see how I'm doing this very slowly, but when you, when you do this exercise, I get to this other root. Well, now it's part of the one I'm in, but it's on the other side, on the right side of it, you have the next position up. So you can start to do it really seamlessly um, and really fast even if you get used to this. So, okay, now uh, I was playing here. Okay, and I switched my view over. Okay, now I'm on this root here, and obviously that's the scale form to the left of it to the right of it. So you don't have to play the root even. I'm not saying you need to land on the root and then play over because that would be too too prescriptive. And I love prescriptive. I think with practicing, that's what we need. But you're using just your view of it. So let's say I'm practicing here. Not playing the root at all. But I'm recognizing visually that the root is right here. Visually and kind of um, having a spatial sense of it. So I don't even need to look at it. This is related to how we can kind of practice mentally without playing the guitar, which I'll do a video on in the future, um, where I'm very aware of this right here, that root. I can kind of sense it, kind of just know where that is. Much like, you know, you don't, you're not looking at your, your hand if you're looking away, but you're very aware, very aware of where it is, right? Um, or you're not, if you're sitting at a table and you look up and you're not, not, you're not looking at the table, you still have this sense of like, oh yeah, it's right, it's right there. I was just, you know, my hand was just on it or something. Um, so, so again, whatever way you want to describe that, we're so aware of these roots. Now, let's say I'm not even playing the root. And I'm still using that as, again, I call it anchoring my view, using that as my view. So now I'm going to play this note up here. I went from four to five of the scale because I'm so aware of how that fits around the root. This skill is, is useful, this kind of anchoring the view is, is useful in so many ways. So if you practice it here, it'll actually come in handy with using um, chord shapes, chord inversions, uh, different kinds of voicings and stuff like that when you're playing harmonically as well. So that's it. That's really um, the technique. Of course, I like to always make sure that we have uh, kind of a step-by-step -step way to practice it because that's the general idea. You can play around with that. But step-by-step -step way to practice it would just be basically improvise in the first position. When I say first position, I just mean whatever's furthest left of the neck. There's not really a label to, to each one. And then use that perspective shift to switch over and then find the next root that's overlapping the one you're on and the next one and use that perspective shift to switch over to that next one. And then do the same thing. You find that root and use that to switch over. And if it doesn't sound great yet, don't worry about that. You know, if it sounds kind of like this is weird because I just played this note and then I'm going to that again and it's not what you wanted to hear, that's good to experience because you'll work out what you want to hear later. This is just, when you're practicing one thing, practice one thing. This is just this ability to switch. And then you can, once you're really comfortable with that, you can um, concern yourself more with like, all right, now what musical idea do I actually want to play and express um, on the guitar? So again, um, I think we I think we often get stuck on wanting to sound good when we're practicing something else. That's, it might sound weird, but 
some stuff we need to practice isn't about sounding good yet. It's about a certain skill that is going to be very useful when we go back to wanting to, you know, play something really meaningful to us. So a bit of kind of practice strategy advice there. So once I'm here, then I'm see that root and switch over to that switch over to the not that next um, scale form and then work your way back down at all and again best advice I can give you is just don't sweat if it doesn't sound like you want it to yet or like amazing like a great guitar solo right you're working on on a certain skill um, you're working on kind of a muscle that then you can use in the real music situation so now I'm just going to go through and demonstrate a little bit of jamming switching between the scale forms um, and now since I just explained everything that's going on in my head with how to do it you can kind of um, think about it from that uh, context um, and even if once you get it down you're kind of doing it quickly and intuitively because you want to think about you know the actual music while you're playing um, it still comes from that one skill so as I play around with this stuff you can know oh okay that's how the shifting is happening <laughs> So the general principle here is very powerful. It's just, you know, we need to very clearly identify and know what the gap is, something we're missing, what the problem is. Then we need to find a way to very specifically practice that, not just hope it gets better by practicing a bunch of stuff, but like really target it. And that's what we did here. So breaking out of, um, you know, old habits that seem to just kind of happen over and over again when we feel stuck, uh, finding a way to switch it up is, is really important. So that's one of the ways to do it when you're improvising. Another way is to switch up the actual um, notes that you're playing, the order of the notes that you're playing. So we don't just sound like we're playing a scale up and down all the time. We want to skip around a little more. That's using something called melodic patterns. Very, very powerful, very cool for, for mixing up our note selection choice. I have a free PDF for specifically practicing the pentatonic scale with the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns. That helps our solos sound a little less like we're just going up and down scales and sounds kind of more melodic and more cool. So um, great. that's a great way to map out the scales. Um, so we we don't just see what note is next we can see the whole thing and jump to anything so i made that as a free resource that's um really cool and i highly recommend it it is uh in a, a link in the description you'll see it down there if you want to grab it and have a little kind of sheet in front of you to practice with i put out a video every tuesday and i love making little free resources like that uh pentatonic scale pattern one things that you can kind of have in front of you and tangibly use when you're practicing. So next week, I'm actually going to do a video that's a walkthrough of a super thorough chord chart that I made um, that I talk about on this channel a lot. So if you've seen other videos, you've heard me talk about that. But I'm going to do kind of a demo walkthrough of how that chord chart works. It's going to be really cool if you're interested in music theory and a bunch of chord options or chord extensions or, you know, playing in, in multiple keys, the same progressions. Check that video out. That'll be next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Happy practicing.